in the book of Psalm 28, verse number 6. The word of God through the psalmist David says, Blessed be the Lord. Amen, somebody. Because he has heard the voice of my supplications. And he says this emphatically. So in other words, he's saying, blessed be the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplications. Another translation says it like this. I praise you, Lord, for answering my cry for help. See, this is one of those passages which frequently occur in the Psalms. When there has been an earnest and anxious prayer offered to God and when the answer to the prayer seems to be immediate. Amen, somebody. You see, there are some things we pray for, but there are some things we pray for that we need immediately. Is that all right? And we need God's help not tomorrow, not next week, but we need them right now, immediately. We, the answer seems to be immediately and an answer and response from the Lord where the peace which is sought is obtained, where the heart and mind of the anxious, the troubled, and the distressed becomes calm and the promises of God are brought directly to the soul of the pleading child of God with the confidence or confident assurance that all will be well. See, there's sometimes you and I go to God, amen, somebody, and we need him right now. And God knows us and what we need before we even ask. Amen, somebody. But God gives us confident assurance, and we need to understand that our confident assurance lies not in the external circumstances in this life being made right. Amen, somebody. Sometimes people want things around them to be better instead of you and I being better. Is that all right? But our confident assurance lies not in things around us being better, but our assurance that all will be well lies in the very fact, listen to this, our assurance that everything will be all right lies in the very fact that God hears us. Isaiah chapter 65 and the verse 24 is profound. And we see this principle here. Isaiah 65 and 24. Understand that our assurance is given in the fact that God hears us. Is that all right? Just in the fact that he hears us. Isaiah 65, 24 says it like this. It shall come to pass that before they call. Did y'all hear that? 
Before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Another translation says it like this. I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Even, isn't God good? You see, even in the midst of our distresses, we often forget, even as children of the Most High God, the true and living God, we often forget that not only do we have help, but we have the helper. Not just with us, but in us. Amen, somebody. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 says this. Likewise, the Holy Spirit, likewise, the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the third person of the Godhead, y'all, he, him, likewise, the Holy Spirit, amen, also, also helps, and that's good enough right there. Because we know with God's help, we can't fail. Is that all right? But I want you to understand, likewise, the Holy Spirit also helps understand what this help means. It means to aggressively lay hold of together with. So in other words, there's some things sometimes that you and I are trying to make known to God that we can't even get out. There's some things that we ask for. There's some things that we pray for that we don't even know how to even put into words. We're so hurt. We're so distressed that we can't even get it out. So the Holy Spirit helps. And again, that means to aggressively lay hold of together with. To share in, to aid, and to give assistance with full initiative because of being closely identified together with. In other words, because the Holy Spirit dwells with us, because we are his possession, he helps us. Because, because he can closely identify together with us, amen, he specifically supplies help to us. And understand that this help specifically speaks to supplying that which exactly corresponds to the need. So even when you and I can't get it out, the Holy Spirit makes known to the Father exactly what we need. Amen, somebody. So that's why he says again, likewise, the Holy Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Holy Spirit himself, listen, the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession. Referring to the fact that the Holy Spirit himself intercedes and makes petitions in not just some scenes in our lives, but in every scene of our lives so that we can come in line with God's eternal purpose for our lives. But you need to understand this point, and this is beautiful. The fact that when the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us, makes petitions for us, it goes beyond human language. Amen, somebody. So as was pointed out earlier, when we are hurting, the whole Godhead is interceding on our behalf. Are we getting this? For us with groanings, with groanings, with groanings, which cannot be uttered. And this is why 
the psalmist David can then say back in Psalm 28 and now in verse 7 after he said in verse 6, blessed be the Lord. This is why he can then go on to say in verse number 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. Is that all right? The Lord is my strength and my shield. Understand then that life has a way of teaching us, you and I, over and over and over again that our true dependence, our true reliance must be upon the Lord. Amen. Our true dependence, our true reliance must be upon the Lord. And we have to go through experiences in life to show us that, yes, we can depend on each other sometimes, but ultimately, we have to learn for our own selves to depend on the Lord. Because watch this. The best thing that we can do for each other is give each other the comfort that God has already given to us. So when we're there for each other, we're not really given of ourselves to each other. We're given what we have been given from God. So we're all just directional signs pointing to the Lord, pointing to him and his goodness. Amen, somebody. So it's okay for us to be there for one another, but let's always make sure that we're pointing each other to the real source. While we may be a resource for each other, God is truly the source. So that's why he says the Lord is my strength. Referring to the fact that the Lord himself is the source of our power, the source of our strength, the source of our might to support us, to help us, to carry us through all of life's distresses, all of life's afflictions, griefs, troubles, and sorrows. But also, not only is he our strength, he's also our shield. Amen, somebody. And this speaks to the Lord himself being our armor, our protector, our defense, and our buckler. Is that all right? Not only, watch this, not only for what the Lord himself providentially chooses to guard us against mentally, emotionally, and physically in this life, but most especially the safekeeping and protection of our souls. You see, it's times like this that the enemy will love nothing more than to, as I said in Sunday school, get us to just give up and quit. What's the use? What's the point of going on? But we know that we have something better ahead. Amen, somebody. So we don't allow the enemy uh, to laugh at us, if you will. Amen, somebody. Uh, he was laughing all day when Jesus was crucified on the cross. Is that all right? Because he thought he had won. But he didn't know that three days later that he would get up from the grave. And the same thing is for us who are faithful in Christ. We will get up. Amen, somebody. Amen. Psalm 18 and the verses 1 and 2 says it like this. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and the one who rescues me. My God, my rock, and strength in whom I trust and take refuge. 
my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my stronghold. You see, while sin has come into this world and now we have to suffer a thing called death, that's not all there is to it. There is an after this. So death marks not the end of life. And that's what's so hard sometimes because in this life, we're conditioned to the fact that death is an end. But for those who are in Christ Jesus, death is not an end. Death is a beginning. It's the beginning of what's really real. Amen, somebody. Is that all right? So we understand that we should not sorrow as those who have no hope. And that doesn't take away the pain that we won't see them in this life, but we look forward to the life to come because the life to come won't end. It will be forever. Amen, somebody. And the devil won't have his, his say or do with that because Jesus said in John chapter 10 in the verses 27 through 29, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Notice what he says. And I give them eternal life that and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. Death is not the end. It's the beginning. And that's why we need to ask for God's immediate help right now so that we don't allow the enemy to take us up here to a, to a place that God don't want us to be in. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Is that all right? And that's why he continues to say back in Psalm 28 and verse 7. He says again, the Lord is my strength and my shield. But notice what he says next. He says, my heart trusted in him. My heart trusted in him. My heart trusted in him. And I am helped. In other words, the point is, I have found the help for which I desired from the Lord. Understand this. Don't go asking the Lord for help and don't expect it. Stop going to the Lord to ask for something that you don't expect. We're to go to him in confidence, expecting it. It's his will. He's rich in mercy. It's his will to help us in our time of need, but we have to keep on knocking. We have to keep on seeking. We have to keep on asking. So watch this as we hasten to our conclusion. One of the most difficult things for you and I to do, let's just be honest. One of the most difficult things for you and I to do in the very midst of distress, troubles, griefs, afflictions, and sorrows is to truly trust in the Lord. Whether we don't want to admit it to nobody else. Amen, somebody? It's times such as these which will really reveal if you and I believe what we say we believe. Are you just talking the talk? We trust the Lord, his power, his promises. You say, well, why do you say it like that, preacher? Because we all have to understand, you see, that it's only through our most severe and difficult times in this life that you and I are able to come to learn and experience firsthand for our own selves 
that the Lord God is faithful. There's only so much we can get from one another. Are y'all listening? There's only so much that we can get from one another. God knows in his infinite wisdom that we have to go through some experience in life for our own selves. And that's why we really reiterate time and time again here. We encourage time and time, time and time again here. Make sure you make a diligent effort to cultivate and develop an intimate personal relationship with God for yourself. Amen. Not through mama, not through grandmama, not through your daddy. Come develop it for yourself. Because one day, it'll just be you and God. No buffer. As I said this morning, for me, my comrade, my brother, my right hand is gone. He's finished his race. Amen, somebody. Now someone else has to take the baton. Yeah. Yes, sir. But we have to keep on running. That's right. That's right. We can't stop the race. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Let's praise God and glorify God that he finished. Yeah. You see. We have to experience it firsthand for ourselves to understand that God is faithful. You see, in God's due time, not, all, not only are we given help for that which we have put our trust in him for to begin with, but we learn that in the very fact of trusting him helps and keeps us. Y'all ain't going to get that till you get home. I promise you. The very fact that we trust in him keeps us. The very fact that we trust him keeps us. You say, well, what do you mean? Isaiah 26, 3 says it like this. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. So the very fact that we trust in God will keep us through chaos in this life. Amen, somebody. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, we know it, says don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him, amen, somebody, for all he's done. Then, did you notice? Then, amen, somebody, then because you belong to Christ, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand, and that includes you and I. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. Halo said it right. When we first got this news, the initial response is to quit and give up. But because we trust in God, God gives us a peace that we can't completely understand. Doesn't take away the pain necessarily, but it gives us a peace to keep on keeping on. As our brother would say to us, continue to do what you're doing. Amen, somebody. 
That's why he finishes this verse 7 by saying, Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. And I looked at this in my study, and it came out in the original language very clear. And here's the point. When we pray to God, and God already knows what we need, amen, somebody, and in times of being crushed, God responds immediately. Amen? And he responds in such a way that makes our hearts greatly rejoice. As we said this morning from the passage, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Right? We understand that that's not speaking in duration of time. It's not speaking into the fact that we're just going to weep for a night and then joy comes in the morning. It's not talking about that. It's talking about, again, let me reiterate it. It's talking about the fact that even in the midst of our weeping, our bewailing, our great lamentation and sorrow, even in the midst of that, God will still give to his people experiences of joy. And joy is not dependent on external circumstances. So I can be unhappy, and we're all unhappy right now, but we still have joy in the Lord. Amen, Amen, somebody. There's a difference. So he says, therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. The point is this. While the help of God is designed to always bring about your and my pleasure. Get this. While the help of God is designed to bring about your and my pleasure, even more so, even more so, the help of God is designed to bring about his praise. So we thank him for his immediate help. We praise him. Amen, somebody. And if people walked in here right now, amen, somebody, it's by the expression of our adoration, our praise, our gratefulness, and our thankfulness to God, even in the midst of our sorrow and distress, that we invite others and encourage others to trust in God too. Because people are going to look at you and say, how can you possibly praise God in a time like this? And we say to them, because God is good in spite of what's going through. God is good in spite of it. And I invite you to trust in him too. Because this is not all there is to life. We just talked on last week about the fact that some of us are getting a little bit too comfortable. Just last week. Some of us are getting a little bit too comfortable. And God has a way of reminding us, amen, somebody, as we'll talk about this afternoon, our salvation is nearer today than when we first believed. Awake out of sleep. Amen, somebody? So we trust in him. I'll finish by saying this. Psalm 18, verse number three, the psalmist says, I, I, 
don't know about you. You and I have to make up our own minds. Nobody else can persuade you. Amen, somebody. But he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord. And we're calling upon the Lord right now. And we take confident assurance just in the mere fact that we know God hears us. And because he hears us, we know that we are helped. I've said enough. For anyone who's present with us today, has not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. We extend the greatest invitation ever known to man to you at this time. And we, in all sincerity and meekness, say to you, you're not here by accident. You're not here by coincidence. You're not here by chance. But you're here because the providence of God is still working. The question is, today will you hear his voice? How do you come to the Lord? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Faith is what God gives us through the preaching and teaching of his word. We have to, with that, combine that with our own belief. Do we believe it? Do we believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus being the Mashiach, the Messiah, the son of the living God. Then if we believe it, the Bible teaches us we must be willing to repent of our sins. Luke 13, 3 and 5, Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Repentance is a turning. Repentance is a changing of heart and mind. Not just saying, I'm sorry. Because we can never be sorry enough. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And none of us can atone for our sins. Jesus had to do that for us. So if we're willing to repent of our sins, then we must confess with our mouth. Romans 10, 9 and 10. For confession is made unto salvation. Unto. Unto. Not into. Get that understanding. Because you have many who say today, whether on TV, radio, or anything else, who say, well, all you have to do is say this prayer and ask for God to come in your heart. That's not what the Bible teaches. Amen. Confession is unto, which means you're on your way. Then you say, well, what puts us into Christ? The Bible is clear on what puts us into Christ. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. For you are all the children of God by, notice, faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized, notice, into Christ, have put on Christ. Jesus confirms it himself in Mark 16, 15 and 16. He that believeth, coordinating conjunction, and is baptized, shall be saved. Consider where you are. For those of us who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, let us not grow weary. Let us be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for we know that our labor is not in vain as we together stand and sing the words of encouragement. Why will you linger wandering from the fold of God? Wandering from 